I don't even. <laughs> I <laughs> seriously, I cannot. This is beyond stupid. Okay. Hi guys, and welcome to 2023. So one of the hottest technologies right now for um, generally everything, but when it comes much to coding is the, the release of ChatGPT. And uh, many people are asking themselves, what will this mean for us? Will this mean that uh, programmers will lose their job or uh, will they be quickly replaced? This is actually a very interesting question, which many young programmers today are uh, asking themselves. Um, I'm one of the leaders for the Node.js Warsaw meetup group. So I'm meeting lots of young programmers there. And this question has come up quite a lot lately. Uh, well, what will this mean? So what I wanted to do today was to introduce you to ChatGPT and especially programming in it uh, and do a session where I will be actually interacting with ChatGPT and we will be seeing how it behaves so that we learn a little bit of what it is and uh, if it's actually like kind of taking over or if it's an assistant or whatever um, kind of cooperation or non-cooperation we can expect from it. We will be using a program called Fizzbuzz that is a typical small programming task that you are giving as a first intro thing to a possible programmer on an interview. Uh, it's a very, very simple program and the idea is like this, that um, for every number from you know one and upwards uh, until some limit, like 30 or 100 or something like that, it's uh, divisible by uh, three, you are printing out fizz. If it's divisible by five, you are printing out buzz. And if it's divisible by both of them, it comes out as fizz buzz. So in those cases where this is a match on those rules, you print out the string instead of the number. I just asked ChatGPT to generate this program for us in the first very basic version. I'm using CoffeeScript here for this. And, and we see that it has generated a program that is indeed working. I hope that you can see it here on my screen. You see that we are starting from one, two, and then of course three is divisible by three. So we have the fizz, then after which is four, and then we have buzz because it's divisible by five. Then we have fizz again because six is divisible by three. We are going upwards like this. And once we come to 15 here, we see that we actually get a fizz buzz, which means that it's divisible by five and three. So now we are seeing that the basics of this algorithm is actually working. And uh, so let's talk now to, to ChatGPT and, and see if we can iterate on this. Could you please rewrite this as branchless code? So we are taking this code. Mm. And we are pasting it into the editor here and we are running it and we will see what happens. So yes, it seems as if we actually have a working version, at least on interview. This wouldn't be a valid answer if, since you are using if, and, and that is not branchless code. So I'm actually gonna complain about this. I'm gonna ask uh, um, ChatGPT to redo this. This does not look like branchless code to me. Okay, so now it's redoing this and we will see what it comes out with. Okay, so now actually it doesn't do anything, right? It, it didn't do anything, but it's like saying this version is doing this and that. So now we are seeing that ChatGPT is completely like, uh, and didn't do anything. Okay, and uh, yeah, so it, it, let's see here. The key difference between this version and the original version is that it does not use any branching statements such as if or else to determine what to print, uh, doesn't it? Basically, it's 
exactly if Uh, if right there uh, so I'm saying that to the uh, to chat GPD I'm actually saying that I'm not happy with this result but there are if statements in that code right let's see I apologize for the mistake okay so let's see what it happen it happens in the next iteration okay just continuing here and and it just you know and it just continues to do the same all the time right so okay so maybe we should help it a little bit so let's say like this uh, is there a way to use a lookup table to determine that possible is or buzz values that might uh, make this code use less branches. It, it now presented uh, another kind of classic way of solving it, uh, which is to have a lookup table. Yes, but let's see if this code is valid now. I will just paste it in here and, and remember, okay, so I was giving the suggestion because I already knew that there is such a solution and now um, ChatGPD were like oh yeah now that you say it right kind of so let's run this thing and see what happens okay so we were running this we are going up and we are going to start and we are seeing that uh, something's wrong here okay so, so this is exactly what I wanted, wanted to come to so we come to 15 and fizzbuzz doesn't work so so something is wrong i'm actually i actually know what's wrong here and uh, but what i'm gonna say here is i'm actually gonna tell him like you know like he would be a human being what what my problem is this does not look um, correct for the number 15 what might be wrong oh so let let's see there he actually he actually redid something now so we will see how this works how we can run it uh, okay I'm actually running the code oh you didn't see it run but I will show you the start here so what we are coming in one two fizz four buzz fizz everything goes correct right and then we come to 15 and fizzbuzz actually works. There is just a small problem though, which you, if you are a, a programmer, you probably already see. It's that we are doing the modulus uh, value of 15 here. So why on earth, since we are doing this lookup like this, why on earth did it put a 15 here? So I'm gonna actually ask about it. So uh, is there a way to shorten the lookup table are there values there that are unused i'm taking the whole code again because now this this is the full code i'm actually pasting it in here and i'm running it right so i'm actually running it so and uh, i go up here and it's like okay so so something strange is happening here this is it's completely garbled. <laughs> this is not the, it, this is not right at all. I mean, we have the first fizz buzz at number seven here for some reason. Uh, not look right at all. Uh, let's go back to the lookup table that was 16 elements uh, long because this was the one that had you know the fizz bus at the beginning and at the end right so okay i apologize for the mistake so now okay he goes back and he's smart enough to as you see go back to the version that is like 
uh, there he actually understands this so we are still we are still now back on a working version i can copy this code and paste it into the editor <clears throat> And yeah, so we have this table here, we have this code here, I can run it, okay? And then uh, we can look at the results, we are seeing that, yeah, it seems to be, be working as it should. We see also that number 30 is a fist pass. Yeah, so everything seems to be working as it should. Um, so, okay, I, I tried to tell it, like, is there any index in this array that is not used for some reason and and it kind of tried to make a, a new version where it removed all the empty places for some reason it's like it doesn't reason at all right it just oh i gave it a hunt so i'm just putting something out there basically um but but if i tell it you know straightforward so uh the number 15 or the 16th element of the array above does not seem to be used at all like that okay and i'm just going to see what it says you are correct the 16th element of the graph table plus 15 is not used in the program this is because value using the reminder of i is divided by 15 since the reminder can only be between 14 so so and now what look what it does it's so extremely annoying because it's actually kind of saying what my point was so it's like So, so now ChatGPD is saying what my point was, right? If we go back here and see, it's actually pointing out exactly my point that the index can never be 15. So there's no need in having the 15th or sorry, the 16th element, the index of 15, uh, zero indexed. But then it like provides this stupid version that it, did in the middle that we know didn't work at all that was completely wrong <laughs> why i mean i don't even <laughs> i <laughs> seriously i cannot <laughs> this is beyond stupid okay this is exactly what i mean when it's saying that you don't understand the code and um, you often get those uh, moments together with ChatGPT, but of course as we will see in future videos, uh, it's not like it's bad or anything. It's just that you know, need to know what you're asking it to do. Obviously, this was not a level that ChatGPT could, you know, handle. But ChatGPT is super good at doing other stuff, like uh, prototyping, like telling you just in general terms how to use a library and such. So we will go into that in future videos. But uh, as you can see, this is not something that you can just ask to write the program because it doesn't actually understand at all what it's doing. It's just, you know, putting things together from other things it has seen and just more or less guessing here. Uh, so for all the novice programmers out there, uh, ChatGPD is not going to take over your work anytime soon. I can guarantee you that. But the thing is, you should learn ChatGPT though because the things that it comes up with it's not like you know something that it has come up with it's actually a conglomerate of lots of inputs he, it had had while scanning and learning from the internet so it can actually lead you into the right path what you should you know study because even if as you can see it does some mistakes now and then and that's okay it's like kind of what you can do together with it that it's the most, most important part. And since you are the programmer and you can understand what's happening, so you can, you know, use it as a tool to get where you want. So this was basically what I wanted to show you today. And yeah, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching.